welcome to Quick Bites. Sim the world here making five star dishes and cooking simulator. Today we are tackling corn scalloped and bacon chowder. This is the advanced form of the corn chowder. We had made that in a previous episode. So to start, we need to take two potatoes, an onion and two carrots, drizzle them with 15 milliliters of clarified butter and then chop them into the corresponding pieces and fry them for 30 seconds. Lot to do. I'm going to switch it up a bit. We're going to chop first. I'm going to put these on a plate. Uh, and my, my suggestion with the chopping, it's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult to get uniform pieces. My advice is to set up some bowls in your downtime in between, you know, your prep and your cleanup phases. Grab a, a bunch of potatoes, chop them up into pieces. Have a bowl for like 15 gram pieces, for 20 gram pieces, for 25 gram pieces, for 30 gram pieces. You'll find that a lot of these dishes take different amount of, you know, sizes. And that way you waste less of the product, which is always good. You don't want to waste a bunch of potatoes just because you're looking for 25 gram pieces. That's kind of what I did here, but of course this is the sandbox mode. So we're going to drizzle the clarified butter on. And hopefully we can drizzle this well. And that counts. Because that's the whole thing. Obviously, if I drizzled it on the whole pieces, it's likely we would hit all five of those. However, here you can see not everything got coated in clarified butter. So I'm sure that will affect the score a little bit, but the idea is it won't affect it enough that we lose any stars. So potatoes, onions, and carrots. Make sure everything's in. I'm going to give this a little shake. Uh, I think I... No, I didn't drop anything. And this, of course, will now sit on the stove and we'll let this fry for 30 seconds. That's starting now. My suggestion for you guys, if you aren't already, go ahead and use the stopwatch on your phone or something on the computer. It's very helpful. The next step we're going to do is making the soup part. We're going to take 700 milliliters of chicken broth that goes in a pot. we got to be a little quick here because I want to make sure to get that pan off. Um, I got to... Oh, we are burning. We are burning. All right, good. I, I don't think we burned anything. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be careful. We want to add, that's enough. I think we poured too much. All right, so the cupboard door came off with us. We cut the heat to the pan. Those should be taken care of. I need to taste this back down to 700 milliliters. There we go. And to this we add, let's go ahead and put in 18 grams of thyme. Need lots of time for this dish, both in the sense of the spice and <laughs> getting everything done and accomplished. 12 grams of salt and pepper each. Put this back over. One more, and to this we're going to put in the potatoes, onions, and carrots. My suggestion is to follow that order that they have on the list. Because when you're dropping stuff in, sometimes they stack. Sometimes things need to be on top of each other uh, to fully cook properly. I've had issues in other dishes where if it's not stacked in a certain way, uh, the main item will stick out of the liquid and it won't cook. So this now boils for 20 seconds. I'm going to focus on that. Let that go, and we'll finish and come back in just a couple seconds. That's 20 seconds. I cut the heat. Let's move on. So to a pan, we're going to add 15 milliliters of clarified butter, and then we're going to add bacon and fry that for 60 seconds. 
And then also at the same time, we're going to cut up a corn of cob into 30 gram pieces. I'm going to add 100 milliliters of sour cream to the pot with the corn and boil that for 60 seconds. So we're going to do both at the same time. Let me go ahead and get the pan ready. Oh, we almost had it. Give that a taste. Put the bacon in. Drop that in. Uh, it just kind of flew through the pan there. That was kind of weird. I just don't want it to... I want everything to be stuck on the pan and not stacked on top of each other so they cook evenly. For the sour cream, I'm going to do a little trick here. I don't care if we spill. What I want is enough that I can use my spatula, or my ladle, not my spatula. I threw the spatulas out in this kitchen. Those will not be used here. We will use our hands. But the ladles are very useful. So that means I put exactly 100 milliliters of sour cream in. So both of these should now be... Oh, I got to put the corn in too. You guys didn't remind me. I almost forgot the corn. That's this whole dish. It's corn chowder. <laughs> okay. So not everything's in the liquid. Hopefully it's close enough. I am going to restart my timer and both go for a minute. And we are coming up to a minute in just a couple seconds here. I'll cut the heat. The bacon is finished. Perfect. Uh, you can see here the onions almost cooked all the w almost burnt all the way through. That's okay. Corn on the cob. The soup's been cooked. What we do now is we're going to move the bacon and add that to the pot. That boils for 40 seconds. Let's do that now. Guess we're adding one at a time. There we go. That will boil for um, 40 seconds. Then to the pan, we're going to add three scallops. And this cooks for 50 seconds. Now this dish is a little more tricky. There's a lot of items and it's a lot of juggling. But once you have a good you know, method for doing these and combining the cook times, like what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let the scallops start for 10 seconds and then I'm going to boil the soup for the 40 seconds and they'll finish together. That way one timer will take care of both of these dishes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's difficult to juggle. But if you can combine a couple of these steps, it really shaves off some time. I'll be back when this hits 50 seconds, and we'll serve it. The heat's been cut. The scallops are done. You can see the corn on the cob is completely cooked. The soup is completely cooked, which is exactly what we want. You can ignore everything else that is burnt. So each serving of the soup consists of... 250 milliliters of soup. So for this, I'm going to grab our 150 milliliter spatula. We're going to grab, that's one, that's two. Know what you're thinking, that's 300 milliliters. This is where your algebra skills kick in. And if you take 50 away, now we have our 250. There's many ways you could have done that. You could have just dumped it in. I know Carlisi Games is an expert and will just dump in liquid into the pots. I am not as ambitious. So we're going to take two pieces of the corn on the cob because those are cut into 30 gram pieces. We'll make sure we grab two cooked pieces. Then we need 75 grams of potatoes. So that's three pieces, of course. I'm going to look for cooked pieces. That's an onion. We don't want an onion. I guess all the potatoes are overcooked. <laughs> Three things burnt in this dish. Uh, one piece of bacon and then one scallop. So the bacon is burnt, which is sad. But crispy bacon is good. Uh, we're also going to kind of be a little skimpy with the scallops. So it's one scallop <laughs> corn chowder. But let's see if we get our five stars. Serve up the dish. And the customer says it is five stars. Fantastic. So any complaints? We do have complaints on the clarified butter. So this is what we dump things on. It says not enough, too much, and not enough. 
I I don't exactly know. I think it's because we didn't dump it on the whole items. But I do this to show you guys, even if you chop it first and then drizzle, you don't lose anything. You get your full score. And this is in sandbox mode where I don't have any perks unlocked, which would pad my score. When you get to this level in the campaign, you should have enough you know, skill points unlocked that they it's even more padded, so you don't have to worry about chopping these as tedious as I have. It'll be easier for you guys. But this hopefully gives you an idea of how to juggle the dishes and how to put it all together and get it all set for five stars. So if you guys have any questions or are struggling with any dishes, please let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching as I simulate my life one game at a time. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the future action. You can follow on Twitter for updates of future games being played, as well as follow on Twitch, as I'll occasionally stream live. Thanks, and I'll see you next time at Sim the World.